swaths of sinkholes, bedrock bluffs, mysterious masses of mounds. The Ozarks are full of fascinating landforms that are uniquely revealed by LIDAR. And there are times when this region is best appreciated indoors, like when winter storms keep you at home. One of the great things about LIDAR is how it lets us see beyond vegetation cover and human land use to reveal details of the land's surface, like these sinkholes near the Springfield Airport. So today on Ozark Outsider, let's take a tour of the Ozark landscape from above. We'll be using the U.S. Geologic Survey's online national map with the hillshade stretched LIDAR layer. In an aerial photo, southeast Missouri's Perry County looks pretty normal, but turning to LIDAR data reveals that this area is absolutely laced with sinkholes. You could be forgiven for thinking that we'd swapped in imagery of some World War I battlefield scarred by artillery fire. Dense sinkhole plains occur in multiple regions, such as here along the very northern fringe of the Ozarks, and here just north of the Arkansas border. Big Flat Arkansas is almost the opposite of a sinkhole plain, where a flat-lying, erosion-resistant sandstone creates an unusually smooth landform atop the otherwise rugged landscape where this cap rock has been eroded away. And here's another example of high flat ground from Missouri. Bedrock patterns stand out here in southwest Missouri's Berry County, where you can follow the trace of prominent near-horizontal layers across the landscape. This effect is even more pronounced here in eastern Oklahoma, where you can roughly distinguish different bedrock layers by their erosional patterns. And here in northern Arkansas, bedrock layers form dramatic staircases descending from a high plateau. This pattern of a steep, one-sided drop-off from a nearly flat upland is called an escarpment. This one is highly dissected by rivers cutting through it, but escarpments can take a very different form, too. Here in central Missouri, an escarpment forms a clear watershed divide. The nearly flat ground to the north gradually drains directly toward the Missouri River, while the steep drop-off to the south feeds into the Osage River. Here's another example from southwest Missouri, where an escarpment actually helps form a three-way drainage divide separating the headwaters of the Gasconade River to the northeast from two widely separated tributaries of the White River to the west and southeast. From the ground, this valley and its surrounding ridges don't seem particularly remarkable, but they're actually a dramatic example of a cut-off meander. As Ozark rivers carve winding valleys into the hills, they naturally form meander beds separated by narrow necks, and every now and then one of those necks gets breached. The river follows its new, straighter course, leaving behind a stranded loop as an isolated valley. This photo looks up the abandoned valley of the Gasconade River, now the oversized home of the much smaller Swan Creek. An even better example occurs along the Merrimack River. Here you can see two such loops side by side, one of which hasn't been breached and one of which has, leaving a cut-off meander behind. At the center of this cut-off is a related feature, a lost hill, a common term for the isolated high ground left behind in an abandoned meander. These can be strikingly prominent as unusual standalone topographic highs surrounded by flat valleys. We'll close with an especially bizarre feature that we only learned about relatively recently, and seems to be gaining more attention. These are low, roughly circular, dome-like structures that are littered abundantly across certain landscapes. They can be subtle on the ground, especially with any kind of vegetation cover, and are a perfect example of how LIDAR helps reveal interesting landscape features. It's absolutely shocking to go looking for these in LIDAR and realize how common they are, hidden in plain sight. Here's another expansive collection in northwest Arkansas, and another in eastern Oklahoma, and another in eastern Missouri. These aren't just an Ozark feature, but have been recognized across much of the western United States. A published study on the mounds at this particular site concluded that past burrowing action of pocket gophers was the likely cause of mound formation here. But the morphology and landscape position of the mounds is variable among locations, and many different mechanisms of formation have been proposed over time. Even the proper name for these features hasn't been settled, with various sources calling them prairie, mima, or pimple mounds. These mounds bring us full circle back to sinkholes. Both are loosely circular structures that can dominate an Ozark landscape, yet can be surprisingly difficult to appreciate on the ground. 
This visual comparison reminds us of those old optical illusions, where a given feature could pop in and out depending on which way you looked at it. Let's rotate these and see if you have the same experience. Do the sinkholes now look like cones and the mounds like dimples? Let's rotate them back. And if you enjoyed this LiDAR tour of neat Ozark landscapes, let us know in the comments, because there are so many more neat things we could highlight in future videos.